Hello everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we'll be taking a look at another proof of the trigonometric identity that the derivative of the sine is the cosine d by dt of sine t is cosine t using t here instead of x and you'll see why in a moment. This one came to me from a Reddit post that I made a few months ago, I was looking for a part two to be made to a previous video about four proofs about why sine is. Sine has a derivative of cosine. I found some other ones, but I didn't like them as much as this, so I just decided to make this a standalone video. And we're using t instead of x because we're going to be using the Laplace transform defined as follows. The Laplace transform of a function of time is defined to be the integral all space actually only only positive space positive time of the function times e to the minus st so even though i'm not writing it explicitly the laplace transform itself is now a function of s since we've integrated out all the t's and we're going to begin with the laplace transform of the complex exponential so we're going to look at the Laplace transform of e to the i omega t, where omega is some real number. Just plugging in the definition. It is the integral 0 to infinity respect to time of e to the i omega t, e to the minus st. And for reasons that will be clear in a moment, I'm going to factor out, factor out a minus sign the exponential e to the minus this becomes s minus i omega and the reason i want to do this is because i'm going to use the formula that integral from zero to infinity dt of e to the minus a t is simply one over a this is a surprisingly simple now this is a very simple identity that has surprisingly interesting consequences. In particular, this formula and its matrix variants appear all over the place in quantum field theory. It can be shown very easily as follows. I think I've done it before, but it's really easy. So, you, so I, I just want to be able to do this. We have the left-hand side of this expression is equal to e to the minus a t over minus a evaluated at t is equal to infinity and t equals zero this becomes minus one over a zero minus one since e to the minus infinity is zero of course and e to the zero equals one this just becomes one over a i hope you can do this for yourself i think you can it's pretty easy, straightforward, useful, comes up all the time. Use it to impress your friends. They'll be very impressed. Sorry, just untangling a, a cord. Okay, we're going to use this now. Okay, so this integral just becomes 1 over the constant. So the whole Laplace transformer is just 1 over s minus i omega, which upon multiplying numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate this becomes s plus i omega over s squared plus omega squared where of course we use the identity here it's it's pretty obvious a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus ib a minus ib Feel free to check it out for yourself if you don't believe me. We got a squared minus aib plus aib minus i squared b squared. And i squared is negative 1, of course. And that's how, we, that's how we got that. And now we can separate this into the real imaginary parts pretty easily comes s over s squared plus omega squared plus i times omega over s squared plus omega squared. And now, upon equating real and imaginary parts of what we started with, what we ended up with, we can conclude 
the Laplace transform of cosine omega t is the real part here, s over s squared plus omega squared. The Laplace transform of sine of omega t is the imaginary part. And there we have it. We're going to plug in omega equals one and use this to show that sine is cosine. The derivative of sine is cosine, of course. The functions are not equal. All right. With omega equals one, this becomes Or the plus, I was a terrible L. That's ah, pretty bad. Okay. A little plus transform of cosine t is equal to 1 over s squared plus 1. And a plus transform of sine t. No. Sorry s over s squared plus one. Laplace transform of sine of t is one over s squared plus one. Very important to not get those mixed up. Okay, now how can we use this to prove that the derivative of sine is cosine? Well, we're going to use this fundamental property of the Laplace transform. If you've had a class on differential equations, you would see the Laplace transform in it because of the following identity. We know that the Laplace transform of a derivative is just the new variable multiplying the function of a new variable minus the initial value. So basically the, the Laplace transform converts differentiation into multiplication in some sense. The first term is the important one. Second term is just an initial value, which is often zero or sometimes it's one. It's not, it's not as significant. In fact, it is going to be zero here. Since we are now going to consider the Laplace transform of the derivative of the sine function. So the Laplace transform of the derivative of the sine function is just, oh, sorry. I did this in my notes as well. It's S times the Laplace transform of the function. That's very important. You can't just put the function there. You have to Laplace transform both sides somewhere. Silly me, sorry about that. Okay, and also this S looks suspiciously like an integral. It's not, it's an S. Okay, this is now equal to S times the Laplace transform of, it's also, it's also supposed to be a T there, of sine T minus sine of zero, which is obviously zero, so minus nothing. And we have the Laplace transform of the sine right up here, so this becomes S over S squared plus one. And now we just have to take the inverse of Laplace transform of both sides to obtain our answer. So if we take Laplace inverse of both sides, we have the derivative of sine t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus one. Now this fancy inverse Laplace notation may scare you. You may have to think that you have to evaluate some kind of a complex contour integral along the Bromwich contour, but you do not. What this tells you is you need to find the function of t whose Laplace transform is this function of s. Well, we got two functions on the board. You could probably just guess that one of those is going to be it, but you don't have to guess because let's just look at s over s squared plus one. It's this one. This function of s corresponds to a Laplace transform of this function of t, which is cosine. And we are done. Congratulations, everyone. We have now shown once again that derivative of sine is cosine, but have we really? The answer is sort of. To derive these expressions in the first place, we had to use Euler's identity 
namely e to the i x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x. And if you have that, you may as well do what I did in a previous video and differentiate both sides with respect to x, pulling down a factor of i and getting minus and plus respectively for the trigonometric functions. So you have to ask why you would do this if you have to use this in your answer anyways. So the, the answer is you wouldn't do this. This is a more curiosity. It's a check that the identity holds and is consistent with the theory of Laplace transforms. And al along the way, I got to show you the interesting and elegant derivation of the Laplace transforms of sine and cosine, which I really enjoy using the complex exponentials. And if you enjoyed this, want to see more math, please subscribe. I'll see you next time.